Hey guys, welcome back to Cubes and Contemplations, where today we are discussing the concept of an orthographic view. This is certainly one of the least important or relevant topics I've ever covered on Cubes and Contemplations. Not many people have probably put much thought into the idea of an orthographic view. It's just a certain perspective, right, of how you can view things in diagrams. As I thought about an orthographic view more and more when I was really, really bored running, I found it was like an interesting rabbit hole that keeps getting deeper and warmer and more comfortable the further you get. So it's like, what I'm trying to say is that this is an interesting thought experiment sort of deal, rather than just talking about random garbage for 14 minutes. So for starters, what in the world am I talking about? Well, an orthographic view is a view of something where there is no depth or perspective. Everything, no matter how far away it is from the camera, is the same size when you draw it. That actually probably sounds really hard to imagine because everything we see is with perspective. It's easier to imagine if we use Minecraft blocks, funnily enough. So if we build a staircase that is going up and away from where we are currently standing and looked at it head on, the higher stairs appear smaller and the lower stairs look larger. That's because our view has perspective, so further things look smaller. But an orthographic view of this exact same staircase would have each stair being the exact same dimensions, no matter how far they are away. So in this orthographic view of the staircase, there is no perspective or visible depth. That is an easy way to think about it, but we gotta start throwing in some wrenches to this to really make it interesting. An orthographic view is easy to imagine looking straight on to a straight surface, like those stairs. But what does it look like when we're coming in from another angle, say a 45 degree angle of the same staircase? You should be able to tell that the side of the object in the orthographic view further from the camera is further from the camera, but our definition has said that there is no depth or perspective, so how are we actually going to demonstrate that? Fortunately, this is the point where a simple rendering program can actually do the work for us. I'm going to show a view of a Minecraft model from the program block bench. Here it is with perspective, the normal way you would see it in game, and here it is with orthographic view. It's a diagonal angle, but we're seeing it orthographically. It's a little hard to figure out what's going on exactly, but the pixels on the back of the cow, even though they're further away from the camera are the same size as the ones at the very front. So we should probably correct our description of an orthographic view a little bit. Straight lines stay straight in an orthographic view, but bend to our perspective in a non-orthographic view. As you can see in this cow with the perspective view, the sides of the cow bend a little bit, or they appear to bend from our vision. But in the orthographic cow, the sides are perfectly straight all the way through. But what is especially hard to visualize for me is how an orthographic view looks in motion. Luckily, this rendering program block bench can also rotate with the orthographic view enabled. The first thing you might think is, wait, this is an orthographic view? Because it looks very similar to the perspective rotation, but it kind of breaks my mind a little when I try to think about what's going on. The parts of the cow that are further away are moving faster because that's how rotation works. The edge of a circle rotates faster than the middle, but they're never getting smaller. And even though what we're seeing of the cow is changing, the size is consistent. It's weird, right? That doesn't seem comprehensible, but the computer is just like, here's what it looks like. Cool. Here's a small interesting thing. Every single 2D game in history is rendered orthographically. Mario is an orthographic view because the lines don't bend. Uh, or at least, you know, like Super Mario Bros, the original. Hollow Knight is an orthographic view because the view doesn't bend. Any 2D game is an orthographic view because the view doesn't bend. There's one more way we can make the orthographic view visualization in your head even harder, though, and that's thinking of orthographic views over a long distance. So when I was running on a trail a few months ago, like I mentioned before, and I was really thinking about the orthographic view stuff, the distant parts of the trail I was running on were tiny. And that was really the catalyst for making me think more about what that would look like in an orthographic view. Because I know the trail is an equal distance across the whole way through, because I've run it multiple times. I know that at the bottom of the hill it's not actually smaller, so what would that look like in an orthographic view? How would I get an orthographic view of the bottom of the hill 
from the top of the hill. This brings us to the crux, the real challenge of this video. How do you take an orthographic view of real life? What do you mean, agent? Just take away the perspective of the camera like you did in Blockbench. All right. Go ahead. Open up your phone. Get out your camera. Show me the setting that turns off perspective. Hmm? Do it. Take an orthographic picture and show me. I'd like to see you try, because it's not a thing that we can do with cameras in real life, right? Because there's always one point where all the light is going to. One thing that I noticed while running, again, is that if a field of view is more narrow, you approach an orthographic view. Think about it. The less you can see, the less it bends by the edges. So in theory, if you could get a field of view of zero degrees, you would have an orthographic view. The issue is, you can't. You can't have a field of view of just zero degrees because then you also lose all your field of vision. You can't see anything. It might be an orthographic view, but it's an orthographic view of nothing. How do you get a real life picture of both a wide and orthographic view? Here's what cracked the whole thing open for me. Think of how light approaches your eyeball. Or even just think of why we have an eyeball and not like an eye tablet. The circular shape of our eyes allow us to see light coming in from multiple directions at once. We see stuff to the right of us, we see stuff to the left of us, we see stuff above us and below us. And that's because the ball of the eye is able to get light from multiple directions. Camera lenses also work the same way. It's a circular lens because it takes in light coming from many angles, this is my assumption of how cameras work. It takes the light into the circular lens, compresses it into the tiny little actual light receptacle on the camera, and then saves that as a digital picture. If we made a camera lens flat, we're not really solving the issue. There's still that one little bit where all the compressed light has to go at the end of the day. So let's take yet another little detour. You know those things they have at stores where you can stick your hand into like a wall of plastic sticks and then see the shape of your hand on the other side of the wall of plastic sticks? There's a picture on screen. I have no idea what this is called and I really struggled to find a picture, but I did find one eventually. The hand that those plastic rods forms is orthographic. No matter how long those plastic rods are, when you put your hand in them on one side, it will look the same on the other side. You can make the rods as long as you want. Now let's look at the properties of this thing. Every rod in this situation is parallel. Every rod is equally spaced. Every rod is not equally distant from the source. Maybe you figured out where I'm going with this now. Instead of plastic sticks, we can imagine those parallel lines that are equally spaced as photons, beams of light. If we shoot out a square of parallel beams of light that are equidistant, or I guess receive beams of light in a parallel grid, we would get an orthographic view of real life. Here's the real issue. Every single photon, every beam of light needs its own little recipient thing, the light receiver, to get the view that's coming straight on at that angle. Photons are impossibly small, to put it lightly, and we could not physically create a lens small enough to capture every photon. So you can't make a true orthographic view of real life, but you could probably get something approximating it by making a grid of cameras and only using the very center of the picture of each camera and putting them together. That would be the closest you could get to orthographic view practically. The reason that computers can do it so easily is because they only need to send one little beam, one plastic stick, for each pixel on your screen. Below that, it doesn't matter. That's a manageable amount for a computer to do. By sending equally spaced, parallel beams of light at an object, we can get depth without perspective, which was the real issue of our original definition of an orthographic view. We said depth was not allowed, but it's totally necessary for a complex 3D shape to make sense from any view besides the side. That woolly cow I showed you wouldn't make any sense if there was no depth visible. We would need to know that there is still a part of the cow behind another part, even though it's the same size. Depth without perspective is the real goal of an orthographic view. Wow. 
that is fun. I love going off on long, weird, interesting tangents like these, especially about things that I feel like no one would ever talk about because there is no practical application to this, unless you're like a programmer or a physicist, perhaps. Um, I'm neither. I'm just a person who's making lots of assumptions in one video and telling them all to people. This could be mass misinformation, but that's how I've thought about what an orthographic view is. It's like a wall of parallel light that hits something so you can get depth of that perspective. And that's how I've kind of reconciled the idea of an orthographic view to work in real life. Did this video make any sense? Do you get what I was going on about at the end about how we can't have a true orthographic view because photons are too small? Tell me in the comments below. But for now, I do want to tell you all, Thanks for watching, and I will see you later.